Marilyn Monroe was born, grew up, and died in Los Angeles. But two men who knew her well say she found a certain peace right here in New York, that it was here she seemed happiest. If she said once that the stimulation here you couldn't find anywhere else. Marilyn Monroe felt more at home in New York than she did in her native Los Angeles. Her longtime friend and publicist John Springer says it's because here she learned to develop her talent under the guidance of Lee Strasberg at his actor's studio. She gained a lot of confidence in herself, in her own talent, in her own ability. She knew she was more than just a, uh, a pinup girl, more than just a cheesecake kid. The year was 1954 when Marilyn came to New York to film The Seven Year Itch. That's the dress she wore in that famous scene. New York was craving for Marilyn's affection then, and by the looks of things on Fifth Avenue, that craving hasn't diminished. Fans followed her everywhere, and she didn't seem to mind a bit. One fan was 16-year-old James Haspiel. He got to rise above the crowd and managed to get the affection so many millions of fans could only dream of. It was easy to track Marilyn in the 50s because the columns and the newspapers in general would let you know where you could expect to see her. So I would go there to see her and eventually she saw this face, much younger of course, uh, enough times to recognize it. One day Marilyn invited Jim to ride with her in a cab. It was the beginning of a special relationship that would last for eight years right up until her death. He has thousands of photographs of her and 32 minutes of home movies. He captured rare moments, like Marilyn going to her favorite coffee shop in the East 90s, in her car with the top down, or just clowning around. The night that I took that picture, I knew that she let me take it because she knew I would never use it. And I use it even today just to show how extraordinary she was. Both Jim and John Springer saw her in a light other than the limelight. They both speak about the two Marilyns. She could turn it on and off. Eli Wallach, I believe it was, was walking from the actor's studio with her one day, and she had on dark glasses and a little, and nobody was paying a bit of attention to her. He said, look, nobody no, nobody even recognizes you. She said, I know. Do you, do you, want, do you want to see them recognize me? So right away, and she changes, changes the way she walks, the way, she, you know, just, took off her, her hat, took off it, and she was Marilyn Monroe. <laughs> and everybody, everybody flipped. You know, she invented herself, and the mission was to make the, to polish the invention. Marilyn's last interview was with Life magazine. It was recently shown as a documentary on HBO. It is one of the few times Marilyn publicly talked about her life and her fame. If I am a star, the people made me a star. There was no studio and no person. Uh, it's a piece of it. There was a reaction. There was something special about Marilyn that was beyond just your normal, ordinary movie star. Marilyn had a sweetness. Why did you lead me to think you could care? You didn't need me. You had your share. You can look at her movies. 30 years later, and they're as fresh, and she's as fresh as she was then. Baby, I'm through with love. Now, there is one more man who knew Marilyn during her New York days. Pay close attention to the man to Marilyn's left with his hand leaning against the wall. Miss Monroe, uh, this is a rather personal question, but is there anything in particular about Mr. Bellow that uh, attracted you? Have you seen him? Yes. <laughs> now, who would ask such a personal question? If you didn't recognize the voice, how about the face? That's right. It's Gabe Pressman. He's still at it today, asking those personal questions. Right. Oh, that Gabe. Well, he's a legend as well. <laughs> That's Gabe true. Is. Thank you. Fascinating Thank stuff. Thank you, Don.